In this video, I'm going to talk about variable scope in C. So variable scope is all about where variables are accessible and what variable will be accessed when a particular name is used somewhere in the code. So we can say here int x is equal to 5. And what we're doing is we're declaring a variable x inside our main function. And what we would say is we would say that this variable has the scope of the main function, basically everything between these two curly braces here. And we would then call it a local variable. We might say that it has function scope as well because it has the scope of this function main. And you'll see different terminologies used like that to describe the same thing. So we can compile this and it's not going to be too surprising that we're going to get x is 5 here. And that's because we can use the variable x like this inside a printf inside the main function. Now, it doesn't have scope outside of the main. So if I were to say here void func to make a function declaration here, and then I'll provide a function definition down here. And let's say I try to print f x inside this function. And then I'll try calling the function too. I'll try to call it so that way it'll try to use that, that variable x there. Now, this is actually not going to work. It's actually not even going to compile. So let's try to compile it. And we get error, use of undefined identifier x. And that's because the variable x just doesn't exist outside of the main function. It doesn't exist outside of these curly braces. And therefore, we actually can't access it here. Similar thing if we try to put a printf up here, actually. If we try to put a printf up here before the variable x has been declared, x doesn't exist there either yet because the variable hasn't been declared yet. So the, the variable x has the scope of the main function. It's only going to exist inside the main function. And it's only going to exist after it's been declared. So that's one thing we've got to be aware of. Now, we can actually have another variable x, though. So I could say here int x is equal to 8. And what we've got here is we now have a variable x that's set to 8. And this variable x has the scope of this function here. It has a scope of func. And if I clear this, I can compile it and run it. And it's actually going to work now. And that's because now we have a variable x that has the scope of this function. It's local to this function. And we say printf x, we can print off x just fine, but it's not this x, it's this x. And so that's something we have to be aware of is that we can actually use the same variable names across our program just fine, but we need to be aware of the scope of those variable names. And when we declare variables inside a function like this, it's going to have the scope of that function. Now we can have variables that have a larger scope than the function. We can have variables that are called global or sometimes file scope you might see used as well. So if I say here int and I say y is equal to three, what I'm doing is I'm declaring a variable y and this variable y is going to have scope over the entire file. So if I say here printf and I say printf y and I say percent %d here and I'll print out y, this is actually going to work just fine. So I can compile this here, run it, and we get y3. And that's because this variable y that's been declared outside of any function here, it has what's called global scope. It has scope over all the, the functions in this file. They can all access y. And we might call this file scope as well. That's the other terminology you might see used too. And so we could also access y inside this function here. So I could say printf, let's print off y in this function here. And if we do this here, we're going to get y is 3 again. And all the functions and all the, the code here in, inside main here can access y as well and change it. So maybe we, we set like y plus plus here once before we call the function. And then we're also going to do a y plus plus once in here. So by the time this function goes to print out y, it should now be 5. So we can clear this. We can recompile, we can run it, and we get y3, and then we increment y by 1, so it's going to be y4. We increment y by 1 again, but this time inside the function here, and this time y, when it prints out, is going to be 5. And so we can access and modify the variable as well. And this is what we call a, a global variable. Now, one thing that's interesting, and this is something you generally want to avoid, but you should also know the behavior in terms of how it works. What if I said int x is equal to 2? So what if I said int x is equal to 2? What's going to happen here? Because I now have this global variable x, but I have local variables called x inside of main and inside of func here. So which x is going to be used in here? And that's why I say at the start of the video, variable scope is also about 
what variable is going to essentially be used when you use a particular variable name because there might be this sort of name collision like this where you have two variables with the same name. One is global scope, one is local scope. So let's see what happens here. When we compile this and we run it, we get x5, x8, which is the values of the local variables. So what's going to happen is, is that if there's a local variable that already exists, then that's going to actually take precedence over the global variable with that same name. So local variables take precedence over, over global variables in the sense that if you have two variables with the same name, it's going to be the local variable that is going to be used. Now, in general, you want to avoid this. You don't really want to have global variables, global variable names that have the same names as your local variables because that's just going to be confusing to understand. In general, it's considered a bad idea to actually use global variables. Maybe not always, but in general, it's considered a bad practice that we want to avoid. And it's because global variables can cause what are called side effects, where we have functions, say, modifying a global variable like this, and it's not really apparent from the parameters of the function or the return value that it's going to be modifying this state, but it is. And we call that a, we call that a side effect. And that's something that can be really hazardous in terms of understanding how our code works and causing bugs and making our code difficult to maintain. So just because you can do this doesn't mean you should do this. You should really kind of really be careful with using global variables because they make your code difficult to understand. So there are some other kinds of scope as well. Another kind of scope is block scope. So if I said this, if I said here int and I said z is equal to two, then the variable z is going to exist within this block here. So I could say here print f and I could say z and we could print out z and this will be okay. We'll get a we'll get a value for z here too. But if I then try to print fz outside of that block, you can already see actually the text editor is highlighting it. But if we try to run it, we're going to get another error similar to, similar to as before where we've got error use of undeclared identifier z. So that's because z has the, the scope of this block here. And we would say that it has block level scope. Now, where you actually see this is in something like a for loop and a counter variable. So you see something like this. You'll say for int i is equal to 0, i is less than 10, i plus plus, and we do a printf of i. So we'll printf i, you know, percent d slash n, and we can use i within this loop body here. So we can use it within the, the body of the loop here, but we can't use it outside of it. So if I tried to say like printf i outside of the loop, that's not going to work. So we'll try to do it with the printf inside the loop first, and then we'll see how it'll go if we try to do it outside of the loop. So we get this, we get i from zero to nine, but if we try to use i outside of that loop, it's not going to work because that variable i has block scope. It has the scope of the control structure here, the scope of this for loop here. And so we call that block level scope. And this is a practical example of where you'd see block level scope. So then one more thing we should talk about is function parameters and how those work in terms of scope. So if we had a parameter in this function, let's say we said here int a, this here, technically speaking, this is another type of scope. Technically speaking, this variable a has the scope of the function prototype, we call it here. Now, I mean, this doesn't really matter that much in practice. It's not going to come up that much in practice, but just be aware that that's technically the scope of a right here. Now, when we actually use a here in our function, this variable here is basically a local variable. So like we can access it. We could say like, you know, a plus plus, and we could print it out. We could say print f. We'll actually put this down here. We'll say a plus plus, and we'll say print f a. This is basically just a local variable at this point. It's a variable that's local to the function. And we can print out A, and we're gonna have to pass the, the function now a variable. So I'm gonna have to pass it here, like we'll pass it like 10 for A. And that now basically just becomes a variable that is local to that function. I'm just gonna comment out all this other stuff we did just so we can see the end where we print out A. So we'll compile it here. And oops, I forgot to put A at the end here. I gotta put A as an argument to my printf there. So we, we put A there and we'll clear, compile it, run it. And we get that A is 11 because we passed in 10. And basically we can think of this as being a local variable A that gets assigned the value 10 at the start of the function. And then we can still modify it. So we can say A plus plus and do whatever we want with it with inside the function. And then we can print it out. We get A 11 and we're all happy. And we can basically think of this parameter here as being a local variable. And that's really it in terms of understanding variable scope in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.